So today let's try to fix or repair or restore or whatever you want to call it this pump for car tires. It's a vintage hand pump and I don't know how old it is but it can be easily 50 years or so. And to this day I was actually using it as my main pump to inflate tires of my car. And after about 50 or more years of use it finally broke down. And it was a crazy story. I drove my car about half a kilometer from my home and then the car in front of me suddenly stopped and turned the hazard lights on and the driver ran out of his car and went to me and so I opened my window and he told me, your tire is empty. So I went from my car and took a look at my left front tire and it was empty. So I said thank you for telling me and I went into my trunk and I took this palm up and tried to inflate it. I managed to partially inflate it and then the pump stopped working. I was using it regularly for multiple years and the previous owner was probably using it regularly for decades, but everything probably finally fails, or at least it requires some maintenance. At least I managed to partially inflate my tire so I went back very slowly and it was just about half a kilometer from my home. It was actually good luck it didn't happen later. And now let's try to fix the pump. I was pumping and it suddenly stopped pumping and it was just, the handle was very loose in it and it was very easy to press. It wasn't pushing any air and it wiggled and I immediately knew what happened. The piston basically came loose from the end of this rod and I've already opened it before I decided to make a video about it. And of course everybody's screaming and complaining and unsubscribing because you probably want something electronic but now it's either going to be this video or no video today. So you can just skip this video and wait for the power supply or something else electronic. And this thing is basically mounted in it by screwing this thing on here. And there was some sort of piston at the end of this rod and it fell off. It was probably on some sort of a knot and it came loose. I unscrewed this and removed the rod and then the piston was of course stuck at the bottom of the cylinder and what I did was I was basically banging it against a piece of wood until the piston basically fell out. Let's take a look inside of it. There's probably nothing else. But it's almost impossible to point a camera into it and a flashlight at the same time. Maybe now you can see something. That's the bottom of the cylinder and maybe you can see it better than me now. Now let's try to see how it actually works. Here is the hose with this mechanism. You just put it on your tire stem and you bend this lever and basically something comes out here and opens the valve and it also sort of compresses some piece of rubber with a hole in the center. And as you compress the piece of rubber, the hole in it actually shrinks and tightens on the stem and so it seals. And it has a nice fabric coating on it and here it's connected or screwed. You can also rotate here freely, sort of, and you just step on this and you keep pumping. And I guess there has to be a one-way valve only allowing the air one direction and not going back. It actually has to have two one-way valves. One is going out into the hose and another has to be letting the air in and I don't actually see anything. So I'm thinking, does this actually double as a one-way valve? Is the piston actually sealing in the cylinder all the time or does it actually push the air down and on its way up does it actually allow the air around it? Well this is actually the first time I'm opening one of these pumps. And of course the background was too bright, let's use some slightly darker one. And here are the pieces that came out. I'm not exactly sure how this goes in. It has to somehow screw onto this. And there is a spring which basically when you're pulling it out prevents it from banging into this cover. It actually stops in a more soft way when you pull it all the way up. There is some piece of rubber which is very interesting. Is the rubber deteriorated or is it full of some grease? Probably a combination of both. This is very old and of course rubber pieces tend to deteriorate. I'm not sure if I can reuse this or is it possible to get some replacement for this. There are two washers, a bigger one and a smaller one and one nut. 
I'm really not sure how it's meant to go in because it was already disintegrated when I opened it and I guess the big washer has to be on the top of the rubber because it's pushing against a lot of pressure so if it doesn't have any solid support it would bend up. So I guess this is on top and I'm not sure how this... There seems to be some sort of mark from... Was the nut on this straight? It doesn't make much sense. Where this one goes then? I would actually think it should go like this. We're judging from this mark, there's like a smaller circle, almost like from a nut or even a smaller washer. But there was none. I probably look dumb here, but I have never seen it before. I guess this is on the top, this is at the bottom, there's the nut and that's it. I should clean it and re-lubricate it with something. I'm trying to clean the rubber, but it's not easy to tell the threshold between where the rubber is and where the old grease is. The old dirty grease is sort of blending into the rubber, which is deteriorating and falling apart. I probably rather reassemble it before it falls apart completely, I don't know. And because I don't see anything that would let the air in, I think this is sealing just one way and not the other. It lets the air in probably on its way up. This is the smaller washer cleaned and you can see the accuracy of the production of the old days. The hole is off center a bit. And it really strikes me how off center this nut is. It looks horrible but at the same time it's amazing because you can apparently see that back then it was made by hand, not by some automated computerized machinery. This is just bloody amazing. And maybe you're screaming at the computer or laughing now, but I've never seen what's inside of these before and I'm trying to figure it out as I'm working on it. I was thinking that this is on the very top and this part was going against the rubber, but there is a mark from some knot on this side. So one possible option is this one goes on it like this, then the rubber piece and then the small washer and this knot. And it's weird because this washer has marks from the nut on both sides, so it seems that in its history it was already reassembled several times and different way each time. And I was really thinking the big washer goes against the rubber this way because these dirty marks are I think from the rubber, but why would it have a nut in between? It doesn't make any sense. But I really think the big washer should be on the top of the rubber because when you're pushing it down and pressing the air and there is a lot of resistance against it, the rubber really has to be supported by this solid washer to prevent it from flapping up. But when it's going up, it has to let the air in, so the rubber sort of flaps like this and lets the air in. It basically doubles as a seal and as a one-way valve flap. And I like these simple old tools because you can understand how they work just by looking at them. Unlike complicated things like smartphones, which are designed to be controlled and used by completely dumb people or even monkeys, but nobody can understand how it internally works. For me it's sort of unsettling to rely on something that you can't understand. But these simple tools are nice, you can just figure it out as you work on it and after some trial and error you manage to fix it. I will reassemble it the way I think it goes and if it doesn't work, I will just try to do it a different way. And the handle of it actually seems to be repainted. It looks like it was red and then somebody repainted it using this grey paint. Let's clean it a bit. I might also repaint the handle or the entire thing, but of course there is a limit of how much restoration effort actually makes a practical sense before you start doing it just for shiny thumbnail, or before you restore it to such a nice condition that you just leave it sitting on a shelf and you don't want to use it anymore. I want to keep it in use. It's not meant to be just a display for a museum, it's meant to be working for me. I'm trying to clean the cylinder by wrapping this one in toilet paper, soaking it in some solvent and pulling it through it and it cleaned it nicely. And I'm thinking, does this actually work as a one-way flap or is the air meant to go in through this hole? Is it really meant to suck a vacuum all the way up and then suck the air in through the hole? But I don't remember it being so hard to pull it up. I still think it was letting air in through this. 
And of course now I finally found out that this thing can be unscrewed from the bottom, which I didn't know before. Now it's separated and there is really not much of it in it other than some dirt and old grease. And there is no hole in this one to let the air in. Now that it's open, let's clean it here. There is quite a lot of old grease and dirt in it. Once I'm completely disassembling it, I think I can also unscrew this thing. I hope I'm not going to cause even more damage here. And this piece of rubber has definitely seen a better days. Or whatever that is. I cleaned the surface for the seal. This can be removed from it, I guess. And maybe a brake cleaner can clean it better than ethanol, I guess. This was meant to be a quick fix and it's ending up being a restoration video. But at least no fake rust here. At this point I can probably call it a restoration. And I can see some marking on it. A4. It probably used to have a green paint. There are some signs of it. It's getting stuck. And now it's nicely painted and let's try to reassemble it. Let's remove the tape from here and here. I'm not very good at painting, but anyway. This thing is going to get a new seal. Maybe this one, or maybe a little bit too large hole. Maybe one of these could do. And I hope this piece of rubber will still do. I could just cut out a circle out of rubber, but this sort of bell-shaped one is better because the air is pushing from the inside and sort of expanding it and making it seal better. Cleaning the cylinder once more before re-lubricating. Now let's put copious amounts of something slippery on it. It seems to be tight enough to seal, but not too tight. And this thing is just an empty hole, so the one-way mechanism has to be in this, I guess. But anyway, let's put it back together. Everything's relubricated in it. Nice. So that's the pump restored, but of course the next video is going to be something electronic. And if you like this video, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.